Joining me now, Sam Cedar, host of the online daily political talk show and podcast Majority Report, and Eric Bowler, senior fellow at Media Matters. I am uh, I'm fascinated by the phenomenon of the fact that the right has managed to take this big money, this infrastructure of an industry that wants to destroy any attempt to deal with the problem, and inculcate this world of people who are just right. apparently average Joes who spend their time in the comment section of every article ever published. What what is the deal with this subculture on the right of global warming paranoid conspiracy theories? Well, it's it's using the media as a microphone, as a megaphone. I mean, Rush Limbaugh today talking about, you know, how are the Packers going to play in Wisconsin in January? It's so cold. Therefore, there's no climate change or global warming. Again, as, as Mr. Mann just said, we still have winter. It still gets cold in Wisconsin. But again, this is part of a larger movement, sort of anti-science. You know, the, the just a recent poll came out, fewer and fewer conservatives uh, believe in evolution. You know, these are the people who said the polling from 2012 wasn't going to be accurate. Mitt Romney was going to win in a landslide. So what we're seeing is the big money effort, the political effort, and then the media effort, Fox News, Rush Limbaugh, just repeating this over and over, no matter how dopey it is that, yes, we still have winter. But it has, it has been successful, yes. Sam, in creating this this world. I mean, Drudge has been incredibly powerful, I think, in this. Drudge has a thing about right. climate hoaxism, and he has been he has been leading the charge. Well, I mean, part of all all they have to do is right is is add a question. Into right. This. I mean, that's that is the the strategy, the same strategy the tobacco industry had uh, when it came to the uh, the dangers of tobacco. But and know, it worked for thirty years. And it they worked delayed for years about because they, that's all right. you really need is is right. there a question? Is right. this something that is debatable? Right. Right. I mean, this plays into a bunch of different sort of uh, conservative, I guess ideological strains you know the idea that um, if uh, the 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 notion that if each individual uh, functions in their own best interest society and theoretically the environment will do better right. and of course uh, climate change debunks that it also um, uh, attacks the notion that uh, as a communal effort, right. we can do something. I mean, so there's a lot of sort of strands to this that the conservative movement does, and ultimately, it is just again like a lot of other conservative issues, just sort of rationalizations for corporate interests. Red states. Eric Erickson got theological today. The difference between <laughs> this is his actual tweet. The difference between people who believe in the second coming of Jesus and those who believe in global warming is that Jesus will return. Right, right. But uh, again, and it's tied into the politics. And, and, you know, the important thing is, you know, there are members of the Republican Party who aren't laughing at this. They regurgitate it. And, and, and oh, all I would, the time. Say, I would say a majority of the Republican caucus. Right. I mean, a, ma a majority. If you took the House caucus, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying grandstanding for gain. I think privately actually believe right. this nonsense. Here's here is Congressman John Fleming from Louisiana. This is his tweet today. Global warming isn't so warm these days. I mean, I, I think this is an actual belief of right. these people. I actually don't even think they're putting it on for political purposes. So my point, yeah, I, I think you're right. And so it, it would be kind of funny if Fox News did this and Limbaugh did this, but it, it has real life implications. And, 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 and Daryl Issa last uh, last month he wasn't having a hearing on global uh, change, but he was saying to someone he didn't like the answer, you need to watch more Fox News. Right. That's where you need to get your information. Right. I mean, you know, part of this project, too, is that there is a fundamental uh, desire for conservatism to be anti-science. And this is a big, uh, because if you, you get rid of science, all of a sudden there's a whole cascading impact as to what government can do and based on what. And, and so it allows everybody to have their own set of facts here. Uh, and, and, and I think also part of it is, is just... If they think it gets liberals' goats right. on some level, that's I mean, part I, of it too. That's part of the algorithm. thing, and part of and part of the strange mirror world of climate coverage on the right. I think is that in some ways, I think they end up on, in right wing outlets covering the issue more than we do <laughs> in liberal outlets because there's nothing. It's it is sexier and more fun to mock and to say, "Oh, look at this," it's, than to be like. We are so screwed, it's America. Much, <laughs> like, I don't want to start the show that way. It's much easier to have a conversation with somebody saying, look out your window. Right. There's no climate right. change. I mean, you know, the fact is you need a bigger data set than a weekend. No, but I do and, think also that they are on this beat in a way that, some, that, that, that I would say even the mainstream media isn't, Eric. I mean, you guys count this up over at Media Matters, and I feel right, like right. the numbers bear out the fact that actually, in, in some ways, the mainstream media has been largely absent from this while the right has devoted themselves to pushing this line. Yeah, no, Media Matters detailed, uh, particularly I think the New York Times took a, uh, has taken a rather dramatic step backwards, and just environmental coverage, and of course this falls under that. And so, right, this is one of 
the red meat beets. You know, they just when it snows, you make fun of global change, and 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 it gets a response, and everyone laughs on Fox News. And the and the beauty is, you know, unlike the election where everyone knew the next day that they were wrong about the polling, this just goes on for decades and decades, and they don't have to be held accountable other than common sense. Right. That's that is exactly the problem. Right. Totally. Like, right. Yeah. It's a freebie. It's totally. a freebie. It's a freebie until it isn't, though. And I mean, I think one of the things you see is the inversion of this is when summers do hit, right? When you had the wildfires you had in Colorado, that right, there are more right. and more weather events on the on the warm side that are that seem directly related to the fact that the overall climate is warming, and it does, I think, get harder and harder for people to you know be, be, not believe their line on. I think so, but you know, the the argument is one that is ra rather nuanced. I mean, it's you know, it's statistical. You know, right. what are the chances that this is going to right. happen that many more times? It's uh, increased right. and it increases uh, uh, more and right. more each year. That's a much harder case to make, frankly, then, to a lay then person. There's snow in the White then House. There's <laughs> snow there. And Al Gore. Sam Cedar from the Majority Report, Eric Bowler from Media Matters. Thank you both.